गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स डेलीबरेट अबाउट द नेक स्वेलिंग नो नेक इज सपोज टू द मोस्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑर्गन ऑफ द बॉडी मे बी आफ्टर द ब्रेन एंड ऑलमोस्ट अबाउट एटी फाइव टाइप ऑफ स्वेलिंग्स कैन अराइज इन द नेक वी हैव बीन ऑलवेज डिवाइडिंग द नेक इन टू द इंटीरियर एंड द पोस्टीरियर ट्राइंगल बट वन शुड नॉट फॉरगेट ए गुड पार्ट इज देयर इन द पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द नेप ऑफ द नेक and we say there is anterior triangle and the posterior triangle but we forget about the structures which are below the sternocleidomastoid and i think all the structures which are below the sternocleidomastoid should be included into the anterior triangle look at the complex anatomy which is there there are so many blood vessels nerves lymph nodes many hollow organs cylindrical tubes so there are so many structures which are there so this is one of the most complex anatomy which can be there in that of the neck almost about 200 to 800 lymph nodes are there in the neck apart from the salivary glands the trachea the larynx the pharynx and the esophagus certain glands like the thyroid parathyroid and the thymus various potential species which are there apart from the basic thing the skin fat and the fascia muscles nerves vessels and the bones now if you look at the next swelling you can divide it into according to the various types of the presentations like as per location you can say about the anterior triangle or the posterior triangle or the nape of the neck as per etiology congenital traumatic inflammatory neoplastic or miscellaneous variety as per the duration there is a rule of 7 which is there that if swelling is there for 7 days it is inflammatory 7 months it is neoplastic and 7 years it is a congenital swelling then as per the tissue of the origin as per the age of the patient and as per the number of the swellings more the number of the swellings are there it's more likely to the lymph nodes so neck masses can be inflammatory congenital traumatic or neoplastic or miscellaneous variety and in the inflammatory variety there are various infections which can be situated in the deep neck like the ludwig angina the peritonsal abscess parapharyngeal and the retropharyngeal abscess and then there can be the traumatic neck masses like a sternocleidomastoid at the time of the delivery there is injury to the sternocleidomastoid or sometimes after the trauma there can the pseudo aneurysm of the vessels may be there and after the surgery there may be neuroma formation which can present as a neck swelling so the common neck masses basically like the neoplastic various type of the neoplasm may be there arising from the various structures or congenital the development variety like the thyroglossal cyst dermoids etc etc and the inflammatory the lymphadenopathy of the various origins the tuberculosis sialadenitis etc are the various common con neck masses so in the midline starting from the floor of the mouth there can lymph nodes the dermoid ludwig angina may be there thyroglossus or cyst aberrant hyoid bone and then the thyroid may be there the isthmus may be there and then there are swellings which are there in the suprastern space of bones like lipoma or a dermoid a gamma a thymus may be there or sometimes there can be aneurysm from the innominate or the subclavian or even the aorta may be there presenting in the suprastern space of burn and a cold abscess may be there and the lateral swelling depending upon that what is the situation there can be various type of lateral swellings like swelling in the submandibular triangle there can be lymph nodes salivary glands the ranula ludwig angina dermoids and the tumor of the mandible and in the carotid triangle is the branchial cyst the lymph node and the carotid body tumor the thyroid lymph laryngo seal may be there and in the posterior triangle you can divide into the solid swellings or the cystic swelling or the pulsatile swelling and depending upon that and the solid swelling the most common the metastasis in the lymph nodes but there can be others like the lymphoma the lipoma the cervical rib or the pancos tumor or cystic swelling may be there and then the swelling the nape of the neck like there can be diffuse lipoma carbuncle may be in the diabetic patients skin infection various lymph nodes occipital group of the lymph nodes may be there and 
congenitally there can be end cap for seal may be there or so depending upon the probability of the neck masses if it's a child is there then it's can be inflammatory or a congenital variety in the young adults again it can be inflammatory in the congenital variety but in the older patients it's much more like it to neoplastic swelling so in all cases of the thyroids or the neck swellings you have to carry out the quadruple assessment which includes the clinical history and the examination the imaging the pathology and the endoscopy so any patient who comes with a neck swelling you have to take a very good history good to a good head and neck examination the ent examination and then ultrasound fnac radiological evaluations and endoscopy and exam biopsy and certain few other tests can be done for the various type of the conditions one has to look for the specific signs in the neck swelling because many of the neck swellings you can distinguish based on the age and location and duration of the tumor thyroglossal cyst which moves with the protrusion of tongue the thyroid moves to deglutition the ranula the transplantation is there carotid body tumor and the neurofibroma of the vagus they do not move vertically lymph node they are usually multiple and parotid there is elevation of the ear lobule is there so if you do the plain x ray though it is not very helpful but sometimes you can find the cervical rib the calcification of the carotids there may be tracheal compression and the deviation calcification of the thyroid can be seen calcification in the vascular malformations caries spine laryngosis all can be seen on the plain x ray and the ultrasound is one of the very important investigation to locate the site of the neck swelling it differentiates the cystic from the solid and you have to definitely look for the vascular masses because if the vascular mass is there you are not going to put the needle in that a ct neck is the work horse for the neck swelling it provides a three dimensional relationship and especially its relation to the bone is very important to be seen on the ct scan then mri is mainly for the soft tissue especially for the tongue swelling which is there or salivary gland is there mri is very important and if you are planning to do a thyroid imaging for a patient with the thyroid swelling then in that case better to go for the mri rather than going for the ct scan and the radionuclide scan which is there is to differentiate between functioning and the non functioning tissue you can look for the thyroid and the parathyroid and various type of the scans which are there which can be applied in a thyroid and parathyroid swellings and then the positron emission tomography is good for staging of the head and neck malignancies it can be used in cases of unknown primary malignant neck masses and especially for the follow up it is very important that you want to find out that if there is metastasis there or not go for the positron emission tom tomography then the ct mri for the vascular cases if there is a aneurysm disease is there or great vessel surgery has to be carried out or you are going for a embolization then you do the angiography and then the fine needle expression cytology after you have ruled out that the patient does not have vascular tumor you can carry out it's a safe rapid and inexpensive method of finding the diagnosis and then the triple endoscopy you do the laryngoscopy the esophagoscopy and the bronchoscopy and sometimes the nasopharyngoscopy is added to that that's the pan endoscopy and then few common ancillary tests can be carried out like the thyroid hormones can be carried out thyroglobin can be done for a patient the carcinoma of the thyroid so similar type of the few ancillary tests can be carried out in a patient with the neck swelling sometimes you have to go for the examination under anesthesia especially for the deep palpation sites like the base of the tongue or the tonsil fossa or the posterior pharyngeal wall you can combine it with the operative laryngoscopy and you do a biopsy of that to find out the exact cause for that and then there are so many lymph nodes which are there in the neck up to seven categories of lymph nodes which are there depending upon the primary you have to search for any metastasis in the various type of the lymph nodes which can be reactive or it can be sometimes tubercular many times is the tubercular or secondary or it may be lymphoma and it can be reactive hyperplasia many a times sometimes even with the covid you can get the lymph nodes in the neck and then definitely the neoplastic swellings which are there 
There are certain COVID-related neck problems are there, like the patient with a neck pain, neck stiffness, parotitis, lymphadenitis, and rashes may be there. So ideally, one should have what is called a one-stop neck numb clinic, though it is not in India. But like in UK, they have got a single hospital at a one center. They do all the type of the consultations and do a final diagnosis at the one center itself. And that will definitely is going to help the patient by an early treatment. You know, it is not always necessary that you have to carry out the operation for all the neck swellings. Sclerotherapy has come out to be a very big way of treatment of the benign cystic lesion, whether it is a ranula or a thyroglossal cyst, which we always use to exercise. But you can treat them with the help of the sclerotherapy. You can use the OK432 ethanol. And we have been using the sodium tetraacetyl sulfate for our patients with a very good result. So friends, finally, the diagnosis of the neck swelling depends on the age, location, and duration of the lump. In adults, if there is any swelling for more than two weeks duration, should be taken as malignant until unless proved otherwise. Thank you very much.